Here in this topic, we are doing graphing a logarithmic function and finding its domain and range. So the directions state to graph the logarithmic function, g of x equals negative log base two of x. To do this, plot two points on the graph of the function and also draw the asymptote. Um, then click on the graph a function button. Additionally, give the domain and the range of the function. So here for logarithms, you have two points. You should be able to plug in one for x and you should be able to plug in the base, whatever the base may be. Since in my particular case, my base is two, then I wanna be able to plug in x equal to one and x equal to two. And this is why they're telling you that you only need to have um, two points plotted, okay? So I plugged in one, I plugged in two, and I got these values here. Now I got these values using the log properties, but if you're not sure how to use the log properties, um, you can type it in your calculator. You just have to use what's called the change of base formula. So the change of base formula will come up in a later topic in a different uh, or the next unit, um, the next module. But so I was using the log properties. And the log properties I was using, that is, if you have log of any base of one, it automatically equals zero. It doesn't matter what that base is. The other property I was using is that if you have base and then that's also your argument, it does just equal one. The only difference is I had a negative here, but negative zero is still zero. Whereas here, negative one will result in negative one. Okay, but these are the two log properties that I use to find these two values. Now, if I wanted to type it in my calculator, you can use the change of base formula. If you have log with a base and an argument, you're just doing ln of the base over ln of the argument, okay? So for instance, if I wanted to type in log two of two, I would type ln of two over ln of two, which happens to equal one, right? The same thing over itself will equal one. And if it's negative, then that's why it's negative one. Similarly, if I wanted to do log base two of one, that would be ln of two over ln of one. Um, and I think you get an error there. So fraction, Oh, I'm sorry, I put these backwards, that's why. It's ln of the argument over ln of the base, A then B. Here it didn't matter because the argument is two and the base is two, but here the argument is one and the base is two. And if I type this in my calculator fraction and then I'm typing ln of one over ln of two, I do get that zero, okay? So you can type it in a calculator. I know this is a concept that we might not have seen before, but it will come in the future, okay? For now though, you can also just use your uh, properties to figure out these values. Um, once I have those two values, uh, for uh, exponentials, the horizontal asymptote is automatically at y equals zero. For logarithms, the hor it's a vertical asymptote and it's at x equals to zero. But since you don't have anything being added or, or subtracted inside the argument, the vertical asymptote is not shifting left or right. So it's going to stay at x equal to 0, not y equal to 0. x equal to 0. OK. Um, if I had something like parentheses x minus 2, then that means it's shifting two to the right. And then therefore this asymptote would actually move two units over, okay? But that's just not the case for this particular problem. So here's another example, and this one does have a shift, okay? So in order for me to figure out those numbers, remember the first one was supposed to be at the X value one, and the second point was supposed to be at the X value of the base, okay? So, but what I got to do is that's now shifted or changed because my argument has changed, okay? So what we're doing here is we're just taking that argument and equaling it to that one that should have been in the table. And we're taking that argument and we're equaling it to the base to figure out, because that's also the X value that should have been in the table. Now here I had to actually plug in what the base is. The base is four. So I plug that number in. 
And then I solved both of these two equations by adding one to both sides of both equations. And the result ended up in x equal to two and x equal to five. So instead of plugging in one and four, the base, we're now plugging in two and five. And it all has to do with the fact that there's a shift um, in that parentheses. So when I plug in two, I get two minus one inside the argument, which is one. We already know from the properties that log with any base of one is equal to zero. So I plugged in two for X and I got zero for Y. Here I plugged in five, five minus one is four. We know that when the base and the argument match, it does just equal one. So I plugged in five and resulted in a one. So I drew those points here to zero, five, one. Um, now this time, remember, you have x minus 1 inside the argument, which does shift the graph to the right one, which means the vertical asymptote, there's a little buggy in here, um, the vertical asymptote is going to move to the right one. And when it does do that, it's now going to be at x equals positive 1, okay? I just wanted to point out a little quick note here that if it had, if the argument was x plus 1, then the graph would be shifting left one unit, and then it'd be over here at x equals negative one. So depending on whether you're adding in there, that will go to the left. If you're subtracting inside here, it goes to the right. And that's just a quick review of the transformations from a previous unit, right? It's just we're extending those concepts now into to the logarithmic and the exponential um, functions.